Welcome back to Fishing Florida Radio here on the Fishing Florida Radio Network. We are calling our boy up here in, uh, I think he's up in Grand Lake-ish area, up there in Oklahoma. I think he's there. I'm not 100% sure. We'll, we'll find out here soon. Uh, talk to him and see how uh, he is doing after his amazing championship deal he had going on. The first crest, Red Crest Cup winner. First. The first ever. Let me Never give, be taken away. Yeah, let me give him his prop, proper prop, props do you work, do you right work? now. Your intro. 68 top 10s. Edwin, you listen to this. 68 top 10s. <laughs> 11 wins, including the first Red Crest Bass Pro Tour Championships. He's the 2016 Bassmaster Classic champion. He is sponsors include... Let me take a big breath here. Nitro, Mercury, Zoom, Bass Pro Shops, Lowrance, Tracker Marine, Optima, Mustad, Mega Bass, Navionics, Pelican International, Luna C, Wiley X, Ad- Andy's Custom Lures, True Timber, and let me just say, he makes the best damn pecans on the face of the earth. His name <laughs> is Edwin Evers. Good morning, brother. Hey, man. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> are you at home? Did you make it home yet? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you are? Okay. I didn't know if maybe yeah. you had media stuff after the amazing first Red Crest championship. Has it sunk in yet? Oh, it has. I mean, it fully has, but it, it's been a really busy week, you know, doing a bunch of media stuff, news channels and interviews, and, uh, you know, getting to talk to you. Pretty exciting stuff. Yes, it was. Watching it, I, I was watching you as I was doing my fantasy football draft. Did I text you that? <laughs> I thought I did. I was doing my fantasy, trying to do my fantasy football draft, and and was watching some my my friends. Oh, I did get that. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I am. I couldn't have been happier. I have to ask yep. you. You're you're leading that whole. You're leading the Red Crest Championship, and you go into that third period. And what is there like an hour, hour and ten minutes left? And out of nowhere, you go to. Arguably the greatest spot on the face of the earth. <laughs> what made you decide to go back to that first spot that you'd already been to? Was it something that you saw? Well, the hundred percent. What happened? You know, when I when I came in there, got over that last beaver dam. I did. I was sitting on top of. You know, I caught what I caught, and I fished the entire way around that backwater lake. Yeah. And it took me all day, and with an hour to go, I get about a hundred and fifty two minutes from the end of it. And I look up there, and they're schooling big time, just yeah. nonstop. And I'm trying, I'm kind of wanting to finish with my lay down before I get up there, but they're just going crazy. So I just, I zoom up there real quick and power pull down and start casting in there, and you know, the rest was history. It was a lot of fun there. It wore me out. <laughs> All that current was draining out of that lake, going over that beaver dam. You know, it was neck down, and and what was amazing about it to me was it it was maybe two foot deep at the deepest, and I was probably two hundred yards from three foot water. Yeah, you know, you would think that many bass, you would need a deep five, six, seven foot hole. Yeah, it was super shallow where they were. It was it was neat. It was it was awesome to watch because. I don't even do you do you know how many fish you caught in a row without I mean it must it was it twenty six or twenty seven consecutive fish? Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. Now the I know my hands are cramped and I was kinda yeah. all those against that current, you know. So it was like it was a mean because all that current was going against them and it was a long cast. I stayed, you know, as far off of it as I could just to not to spook them. So then they'd bite with about Three cranks into the handle, and I'd have to reel them the entire length. And uh, I hadn't really stopped to drink or eat anything all day, and it kind of caught up with me in that last hour. And to be honest, it was the it was it was great television to start off with because it, you were just so on fire. And and you want to know what the year that you were having to start off with with Angler of the Year points, and you just had an absolutely magnificent year this year on the first year of this Bass Pro Tour. But then to see to see how I mean you were catching so many fish, at one point in time you started reeling like with the back of your palm, because your <laughs> hands your fingers were cramping up. Yeah, kind of embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It shouldn't be embarrassing. It was great because it yeah, just showed. It kind of you know 
we kind of put you guys on these this super level hero. You know, we're we're all fans, and we but you could see you were doing you were catching so many fish. You were you were physically exhausted. I was pretty tired. Yeah, you know, you got to think about it. it's a long week. You know, we first day like start those practice days and the stress level of some of those cuts. You know, I was ninety seconds from not making it in the knockout round. You know. Uh, I thought I'd saved a spot that was really good, and I hit it twice that morning. And I'm way down in the standings in that knockout round, and I, I hit it with an hour to go. And thank God they were there because I caught them every cast in that knockout round to move up to. At one time, I got to fourth, and I can nearly move me to fifth. Yep. Problem was, I ran out of fish with 20 minutes to go, and I wanted to, so I ran up to the bridge corner and there's a couple locals sitting there you know with like seven minutes to go and i'm like oh no and i'm just right i go to the next spot where i think i can possibly catch one and uh i throw out there and i catch one and land it but it hits the carpet well during that two minute penalty stephen browning catches a 210 yeah. unbeknownst to me and passes me and, uh, you know, I'm in the penalty box because the fish hit the carpet, and then we weighed, up, we weighed a pound or something, and uh, I passed him by nine ounces. And that last 30 minutes, <clears throat> I can't describe. My heart was pounding through my tre- chest trying to make it <laughs> for that round. You know, it was just those knockout rounds. They take the wind out of your sail. Yeah. They're, they are truly exhausting. So if anyone missed it, they have it on YouTube. You can see his whole this whole experience. The second greatest thing that happened during this experience, something that I don't even think that that, uh, JT and all those guys put even enough acknowledgement into it. At one point in time, you had caught a bass and the scale wasn't working. And instead of sitting there and waiting for them to get the scale, he let the fish go and didn't count. They didn't count the fish and kept fishing. It was brilliant. (laughs) I said to my, I, I, you dropped the fish in the water, and I actually said to myself, I wonder if he thought he weighed it. But then I was like, you want to know, he's on fire. He does. He He's so far up at this point in time. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable. Well, it's against the rules. In my defense, it's against the rules to hold the fish in the water or re-get the fish in the water to get it wet to weigh it. So oh. I didn't want to break the rules by holding him in the water, waiting on the scales. The fish was pretty marginal. I don't know if he made it or not made it, but... You know, you don't. You just always want to keep that school fired up. And, yeah. You know, I'm sitting there waiting on that the, the scales, and I, I did. I wanted to keep that school going before they went and found some new spot. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, it was I, hilarious. You know, it was okay. hilarious. <laughs> what was the lure you were using? What were you throwing into that school? Uh, that that last flurry was a, a, a vibrating jig, a chartreuse and white. Is actually that evergreen jacket with the, the Berkeley, the deal. It's brand new. Uh, uh, Chatterbait trailer that that Berkeley's making. Skeet designed it. Oh, and uh, that, that's what it was. Had it on twenty pound test and reeling it as fast as I could reel it. Yeah, you were it, you were smoking it, man. It it this was this was kind of a magical. I mean, after having to make the decision on major league fishing bass elites to have the season that you had, y- you got to feel like yeah, I made the I really really made the right decision. I, yeah, no doubt. You know, it was rejuvenating for my career. I, I needed a change. And, um, you know, there were just lots of things that, that I just wanted to change. You know, I just wanted a different, different, different atmosphere around the whole, you know, around all the guys, around the people you work with every day, the camera guys. And, uh, man, it just it, it's the most fun I've had in a long, long time. And uh, super happy that we got it all come together. I mean, you, you got to think about it. You know, there's – about 90 days there from everybody saying yes we'll do it till having the first tournament and heck the schedule's not even out as we're starting the schedule and, and the best analogy i've heard about it you know we're flying an airplane all year long that we're still building yeah <laughs> <laughs> to pull it off and to get that airplane to land and have a complete year you know it's quite a feat and so it just makes me super excited about the future you know if these guys had six eight months to plan the schedule and go to the right lakes at the right times, it, it might be off the charts next year. Yeah, I, I think next year the Red Crest, I, I can't wait to see what how they do the expo next year for the Red Crest Championship because mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, I know I know how, uh, I mean, I we've said it before, Boyd's a genius. Uh, uh, he's, you know, no offense to all y'all, Boyd's got a business no. mind like something else. 
And if he does, if he can even produce half of what we have at the at other giant expos, it's going to be a lot of fun to go up and, and to cover. And, and we're looking forward to getting out there and, and covering it ourselves and seeing y'all. Uh, and that's that that'll be a lot that'll be a lot more fun for next year, which is you know that's what we be. yeah. So yeah, it will be. It was it was pretty neat there at the venue. I just heard lots of people talking about how they were glued watching the TVs, watching that score track and that live update as it was all going. You know, and with the format of every fish counting, those cut lines are just crazy because yeah, that last you know, when, that last twenty or thirty minutes, man. It, it even as a a viewer, your adrenaline, your heartbeat starts going up. <laughs> I mean, and I and I know you guys, I, and I'm you know I I I'm rooting for certain people, uh, and and I see you on there, and I'm like, okay, come on, Edwin, you can do this. You, I'm talking to the TV. My wife thinks I'm crazy, and 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 you know, but I, I'm like, come on, this is this is my boy. I want him to do well. Yeah. I don't need fantasy you always, football. You always <laughs> root for your favorites. I the do. People you know, I do. Yeah. He knows I root for him. I know. Uh, I mean, he brought in sixty-three fish, and I think the other uh, uh, Greg had twenty-two. Oh yeah, you I mean, he <laughs> annihilated. Him. Okay, my next question is: I think we can officially rule out that, and I don't know how we didn't see each other when you were here in Kissimmee. You can rule out now that Kissimmee is your least favorite lake, can't you? Definitely, definitely. definitely. <laughs> it's Finally, it's a. I'll have to take that off my resume. It's a. Yeah. It's it's definitely been better to me the last couple of times. Yeah, second this year at the first tournament was really a good way to start off. <laughs> yes, sir, it was. <laughs> I, I'm just so nervous going into the year. You know, I told my wife, I was like, babe, it's going to be really, really, really hard to make the championship, let alone any of those cups. And it'll just, you know, it, 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 just with the 80 guys that have put, you know, been put together, the Andy yeah. Morgans that come over from SLW and, just crazy good feel top to bottom and uh, i'm just i have to pinch myself every now and then that that i'm more i'm at at the end of the year because i I just can't believe that really happened yeah the the there's one thing that major league fishing has done you've put the best anglers in the in that group that that could ever be combined oh man it's 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 stacked from top to bottom and even the bottom anglers no offense to them some of them are just absolute studs that just oh, you're, are scary. Did you do you think that the the major league format fits you better than what you've done in the past? You know, I I enjoy it. I know I know it's engaging. That that you know I like covering water and fishing fast, and you know it, it looks great on paper. But you know I don't want to say I, the old format. I, I mean, I, I felt like I was fairly. Fair successful prior to this yeah. year you know under the old format <laughs> yeah. I, think I, I think i made the, a little bit you know i think i understood it you know i think i knew you just need to put that trolling motor down and try to catch everything that you can possibly catch yeah you know in the shortest amount of time that you can possibly do it and, and you know I, I i think i just kind of understood that you know and i, I just i think that's why i had such a good year you know i would, I would just get down in the area and i'd first start catching them on a, on a vibrating jig and then catch them flipping and if i had to turn around and throw a drop shot in there to catch four or five more I, I just i would try to leave that area and make sure i brought every bass in the boat and waited that i possibly could did did you find that when you were got on a school of fish that because you were releasing every fish that you could go back and and fish for that same spot maybe a couple days later I, you know, it was, I really looked at that hard at the lacrosse. I'd look in every fish's mouth, and, and uh, I never caught any that looked like they had hook holes in them before. Okay. You know, it was kind of weird. I, I just think mm. new fish came in there, or, or you, you brought that school off. But, you know, that one spot I was saving for the knockout round, I fished it for about 10 minutes at the end of the first round because I needed them bad. Mm. And it was a spot that I felt nobody else found, and they didn't all week. But the shell bed is a real obscure spot. And, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking, man, I'm really going to tear them up come the final knockout round. And, heck, I'm really not the knockout round, save in a great spot like that. And I just think they move, you know, especially on that lacrosse. I just think they move a bunch, way more than evergreen. You know, and in practice, I caught 70% smallmouth. Really? And, um, you know, and some of them were big, four and a half pounds. Oh, yeah. That's and true. then come the tournament time. I caught one smallmouth, and it was the very last fish I caught the knockout round. One. That's and amazing. I, you know, just 
that's how much it changed. Yeah, it, well, you, you got to be really proud of yourself for the year that you had, man. It was, it was a magical year from top to bottom. You really didn't have you. You had so many great finishes, and then to to win the Angler of the Year and then the Red Crest Championship, dude, it was fantastic to watch this year. It really was. Well, thank you, thank you. It was a. I still, I uh, you ask it, you know, it fully had, you know, and and uh, it was something neat just to 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 be in that first year and to be able to do it. I just, it'll be one I'll never ever forget, and thankful that I was a part of. Yeah, for, you're the dude. You're the first championship champion of the Red Crest Cup. That's that's awesome. unbelievable. Terrific. Forever. Yep. Your name's on there forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we I got to let you go. I, I hope that you guys are coming down for one tournament, hopefully in our neck of the woods next year. I really hope yeah, maybe Lake so County. Good. I mean, I guess I, awesome. I I hope yeah. so. I I guess I could text Boyd and see if that's po- if that's good. I don't know when they're going to Have they is there where's any the suggestion idea? box we'll put one yeah, in. Where's the, yeah. ha, do they have they have they started when are they going to announce next year's schedule? Do you know that yet? I, I hear it's in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So there's big announcements coming and uh, I hear everything's coming in the next couple of weeks. So we'll know real soon. Awesome. They've been working really hard on it so. Yeah. I don't see how we can't come down there. You guys got some of the best fisheries and I'd love to be down there. Yeah, especially after this last year's Kissimmee. You can they'll bring it home this time. We're we're going from I'm second like, to first. Yeah. You think about the format. One last thing, Steve. You think about the format. Like, you know, if the last place guy would have pulled up on that school of fish that I fired up, yeah, he wins. Passes me like, and if you remember back to Kissimmee, Dustin Connell in the last hour caught like his best five were like 30 pounds, but he caught like 60 or 70 pounds in the last hour of the final day to yeah. break the next round. You know, that's just what's exciting about that format is – you never ever out of the game. And I think that's one of the reasons I, I felt like I was pretty successful this year. I, I know at the end of the lots of the first first period, I'd be in 39th place out of 40 guys, you know, but I was too stubborn to quit. And I just knew, you know, I just, I tried, you know, to find them and kept moving, but it's a neat format. Yeah, it's, all, it's unbelievable. You want to know what I can't, I, I, got, I got to make this fast. How did I not see you when you were down here in Kissimmee? I covered it for three days. I don't know. It's just crazy. I guess I I, I don't know. Where were you I mean, hiding someplace? I wasn't. I don't know. I didn't even see you at all. <laughs> I even asked somebody for you. I'm like, where's Edwin? I I talked to Jason. I said, have you seen Edwin? He's like, he's behind me. I'm like, I haven't seen him at all. <laughs> well, I'll make, we'll make amends for that this year when we see it. Hopefully, you guys get down here and, and dude, doesn't matter. It, it, congratulations on an absolutely stupid great year. It was Thank you so much. It was. It's wonderful to see everyone. Go to his website. Go get the best pecans. We didn't even talk pecans on the face of the earth. Edwin Evers pecans dot com. You can get them. He's a, one of the great champions we've ever had, and one of the best dudes in the world. So thank you, Edwin, for the time. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, for having me on. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Okay. Thanks, thank man. you. Bye. bye Okay. When we get back from the break, we will wrap it up. Can't. You can't get any better than that guy. He's a class act, always has been, always available.